The kitchen is the heart of our home and a source of some of our fondest memories, but it can also be a huge source of stress, especially on busy days when dirty dishes and clutter start piling up on our countertops or we find ourselves scrambling to try to figure out what to make for dinner at the last minute. Which is why today I wanted to share some of my best lazy minimalist hacks for simplifying your kitchen and streamlining your cooking routine, all through the power of working smarter, not harder. And as we go through this list of ideas, if you find them helpful and want to hear more, please do me a favor and drop a heart emoji or comment with the word simplify down in the comments section below so that I know if I should make more videos like this in the future. Now let's dive in. And hack number one is to look for sneaky swaps that allow you to own less. Downsizing the amount of stuff in your kitchen means that you'll have more space and less to manage while still allowing you to have enough to cook and eat your favorite foods. For example, let's say you want to make a chai tea latte at home, but you don't have one of those fancy little milk frothers. Instead of running out to buy one, think about what you already own and see if you could use that instead. You could always whisk it by hand, or if you have a blender, you could do what I do and froth the milk in your blender before adding it to your chai tea. And I've also used glass storage containers as extra bowls to eat soups or cereals out of. And I got rid of my slow cooker and my instant pot because I realized that almost anything that I wanted to make in either of those things, I could make in a pot or in my rice cooker instead. So right away, I was able to cut the number of gadgets and appliances that I own by 50% without missing anything. The second hack is to use the Ohio rule to keep your countertops clear. If you're not familiar with the Ohio rule, it means only handle it once and it's one of the best minimalist hacks for saving time and energy. Our kitchen countertops can collect a lot of clutter from appliances that you use throughout the day to dirty dishes that pile up from breakfast until dinner, not to mention groceries that need put away, papers and mail that need sorted, etc. But with the Ohio rule, our goal is to sort, clean, and put away things as we go, which stops stuff from piling up too much and making a big mess that we need to sort through at the end of the day when we're already tired. So I just want to point out that I've got dinner in the oven. It's taquitos that I'm making and the Brussels sprouts are on the stove and I have already washed most of the dishes that were here and now the countertop is totally clear and now all we have to do is when we're done eating dinner clean up the stuff that we have cooked in and what we've eaten off of and that's it and you can use the same trick with groceries and kids schoolwork and artwork and paper and mail that needs to be sorted if you just commit to dealing with anything that lands on your countertops right away instead of putting it off until later. Hack number three is to trick your brain with the container rule. And this rule works particularly well for people who have small kitchens who don't have a lot of cabinet space where they can store their items away out of sight or people who have certain things that they want to keep on the countertops but don't like the look of a lot of visual clutter out on the flat surfaces in their kitchen. So in order to use the container rule, what you do is you look at the things that you want to organize on your countertop and find a container that nicely fits those items. So you take all of the items that you're wanting to organize and you put them in or on top of that container or that charger or whatever it is that you've selected and it tricks your brain into thinking that it's one item instead of many items and it just feels a lot more organized when you look at it like that and then the other good thing about this is it gives you a really clear designated area when you or anyone else in your home is done using those things for them to go back to once they're not in use Hack number four is to pick the most logical location in your kitchen for storage. This probably seems pretty common sense, but I know that I, in the past, was not very thoughtful about where I was putting things in my kitchen, which resulted in me being pretty inefficient with my storage and with my cooking. So here we have our pots and pans, and I chose this location because not only does it have enough space for all of our pots and pans to be housed in one location, but it's also right next to our stove. So if I would need to say, make a 
bagel and egg sandwich. Basically, I only have to step sideways and I'm already where I'm going to be wanting to use this thing. And then say something like my blender that I don't use every single day, I have that stored in a cabinet above the dishwasher that's a little bit further away from kind of the main area of my kitchen because it's not something that I need to have easily accessible. Number five, cook two birds with one stone. I couldn't think of a better way to say this, but when I was trying to think of how to explain this, the phrase two birds with one stone came to mind. And basically what that means is to solve two tasks simultaneously with one action. And in the kitchen, what this looks like is say double batching your meals and cooking more at once so that you have leftovers that makes dinner easier for future you. For example, over the weekend, I made barbecue ribs and corn, and then I used the leftover corn to make beef tacos. And when I was cooking those beef tacos, I doubled the volume of the meat by adding not only corn, but also onion and red pepper. Okay, true story. My husband does not like tacos. So in order to get him to eat tacos, which I love because I love Mexican food, I have to make tacos that don't taste like tacos. So this is like the bland version of tacos that I make that's acceptable to him. And the spices that you see me adding are like not authentic Mexican spices, okay? But one thing I will say that I can get away with is this salt-free Southwest Chipotle blend. He finds that okay in his seasoning, but I can't like add the typical Mexican spices. So don't judge me about my tacos, okay? And then I know when I make beef tacos, usually I'm gonna have plenty of meat for leftovers. And then that leftover beef can then be mixed with a bit of shredded cheese and then put inside some tortillas that are brushed with oil to make taquitos within the next few days. And then if we have leftover taquitos, those can then be frozen for a quick and easy lunch on the days that I'm really busy. Oh, and pro tip, the leftover taquitos also are really nice to pack inside your kids' lunches if you make lunches for your kids to send to school. So that's another way to use up leftover taquitos. And the more that you do this, the better you'll get at applying this two birds, one stone principle to your meal time and kind of creating a game plan for your meals and your leftovers. Hack number six is to stop making complicated recipes. Back when I first started cooking for myself, I used to pick recipes just because they sounded good and I didn't put much thought into the ingredients that I would need to make them. And a lot of times I would find myself going out to buy these random ingredients and then sometimes after the making the recipe, I would realize that it was way too complicated or took too much time. And then I would never end up using those ingredients again because it was for this one specific recipe and not something that I was going to use on a daily basis. And so it ended up going to waste. So I had to learn to be a lot more mindful about the recipes that I make and the ingredients that I buy because I hate wasting time and money. So now when I buy an ingredient, I want to have at minimum three recipes in my head that I can make with that ingredient. And I purposely choose recipes that don't take a long time to cook or require a lot of ingredients to save time and simplify my cooking routine. And speaking of which, that leads me nicely to hack number seven on this list, which is to borrow before you buy. This is another great hack for saving time and money because it allows you to road test something in your kitchen before you buy it. Let's say that you've been dying to try an air fryer, but you're not sure if you're going to like it. If you have a close friend or family member who already owns one, maybe you could ask them if they could let you borrow it for a bit and then you could see if you like it enough to go out then and buy it yourself. This hack is also super useful for books and I have to say that I'm a sucker for a good cookbook. Like one of my favorite ways to relax is just to sit down with a cookbook and stare at all of the yummy pictures and recipes. But I'm also super picky about what cookbooks I buy because even if I like looking at the pictures and recipes, I want to make sure that it's a cookbook that I'll actually use. So one of the things that I'll do when I want to spice up my kitchen routine is I will go to the library and borrow a stack of cookbooks and then I'll go through the cookbooks at home and see which ones I'm actually inspired to use. And if I can only find one or two recipes, I'll head to Pinterest and see if I can find that exact recipe from that author or a similar recipe to pin to an ideas board for later. 
But if I end up loving a ton of recipes, then I know that I can go and buy that cookbook without regret. And speaking of which, if you're looking for healthy recipes that are simple to make, I have really been loving this cookbook. As you can see, I've already bookmarked and have made a ton of recipes out of it. And I only bookmarked the first half of it or so. And the cool part is that all of the recipes in this book are made with seven ingredients or less. How's that for minimalist cooking, huh? Yeah, pretty good, right? Yeah, I know. I was proud of myself when I found it. I will make sure to link this cookbook and any of the kitchen items I've mentioned down in the description box below for you, just in case you're interested in checking them out. And if you enjoyed these minimalist kitchen hacks, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel or let me know what other areas you'd like to hear me talk about simplifying next, or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.